So I want to tell you about a classic paradox in probability that is sort of a cautionary tale for students when they're about to hear a puzzle or they're setting up some kind of problem. Bertrand's paradox. There was um, a person who wrote this probability textbook, last name Bertrand. He mentioned in there why you have to be very careful with probabilities when infinity is involved. So what I'm going to do is have a circle and I'm going to draw a random chord somewhere in that circle. So a chord is something that just connects two different points on that circle, right? What I want to ask is a certain question about the distribution of the length of this chord. You know, there's some kinds where if it just glances through the circle, that length will be very short. If it went through the diameter, that length would be very long. Uh, one of the most natural questions you might ask is something about the mean of that length. But that turns out to be a little on the messier side for the cleanliness of what Bertrand wanted to do. So instead he says, compare that length to the length of the sides of an equilateral triangle that's inscribed in that circle. Which might seem kind of weird, like why are we talking about triangles? But it turns out to make the answer especially clean. So if we take some equilateral triangle, where, forgive the fact that I'm a little curved in the side length there, and we call this side length something like S. What Bertrand asks is, what is the probability that the length of your random chord is bigger than the side lengths of that triangle? And we could get a little numerical about this if we say that the circle has a radius of 1, then geometry students might remember their 30, 60, 90 triangles. This angle here is 30 degrees, this angle here is 60 degrees, and so this side length will be exactly 1 half, this side length will be square root of uh, 3 halves. So we could also say if it's a unit circle, what we're asking about is the probability that the length of our chord is bigger than the square root of 3. So just a simple question, like anything else you might come across in some books, some list of exercises at the end, and let me show you how to solve it. 